Welcome to my first tutorial on Pico 8. I'm going to be going over the waveform editor and how we can start making sounds in Pico 8. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is press escape and that's going to take you into the editor window. Uh, you'll start in the code editor and what we actually want to do is click on this triangle to take us to the waveform editor. Um, now the easiest way to create a sound is just by drawing pitches into the pitch window. Uh, so let's go ahead and create like a an iconic uh, jump sound from a platformer or something. Uh, we'll do that by starting low and going high or higher. Um, we can actually go all the way up here, but for now, we're just going to draw about like this. And if we press spacebar, we can listen to the sound. All right, that sounds not too bad. Um, but I think it's a little loud at the end, so I want to actually fade it out a little bit, and I'm going to do that by left-clicking in the volume area and dropping the volume down a little bit. That's not bad. Um, so this is our first sound, and it's, it's sounding all right. Uh, I actually want to go and create another sound. So let's click on the right arrow here, and that's actually going to take us to the second sound. Now you'll notice that they start with zero and they go all the way up to 63. So you can actually have 64 separate sounds um, in your game. Um, okay. Now one of the things that you may have noticed is that the speed area changed from zero zero to zero one. Um, and what that means is this is actually the length of each step in the waveform editor. So each step is going to be a length of one, and in this case, it's gonna be a length of 16. So if we create some random waveform, we're actually gonna hear, uh, let me bring down the volume a little bit, uh, we're gonna hear that it takes a little longer to go through every step than it did on the first one, okay? And we could actually slow it down. Uh, if we left click in this area, it will increase the speed. Or we can right click in the area and it will decrease the speed. Okay. Now let's say that we wanted to take a section of this and loop it repeatedly. Um, that's gonna be done in this loop section. So let's go ahead and set the end point, which is gonna be this box. And we can do the same thing we did in the speed by left clicking in this area to increase and right clicking to decrease. So we're gonna right click or left click to go to the end of this wave. And then we're gonna set the start point. So let's go ahead and do something like this. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna play from the start, play to this point and go to the end and then once it hits this end point, it's going to jump back to the start point of the loop and continue looping this over and over. All right. And the way that you stop that is by pressing the space bar. So it's exactly like you start it. Uh, you just press space bar to stop. All right. So moving on. Um, let's go ahead and check out some of the waveforms that we can use. So there's eight different waveforms that we can use in this editor. And the first one that we've been using is the sine wave. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add in a fairly long sine wave and let's listen to that. All right, so it's got kind of a bell sound to it. Um, if we go on and Let's try the uh, sawtooth. I know I'm skipping this one, um, but the sawtooth is gonna have sort of a buzzing sound to it. Um, now this one here, I'm not sure it has an actual name, but I'm gonna call it the sine tooth wave uh, because it's kind of a mix between the sine wave and the sawtooth. And if we listen to this, you'll kind of notice that it sounds a little similar to both of those. All right, continuing on, we have the 50% pulse wave, otherwise known as a square wave. And this is used in a lot of chiptunes, like in the Amiga or 
Com uh, Commodore 64 or NES era. Um, so we'll let's listen to the, how that sounds. And then this is the 25% pulse wave. So it's a little buzzier, a little harsher than the 50% pulse wave. And then I believe this is a mix between the square wave and the sine wave. Now what's interesting is this actually has kind of an organ sounding feel to it. All right, moving on, we've got the noise channel. Now this is gonna sound kind of like the static on the radio or on like an old TV. And the reason that you might wanna use this is for like snare drums or um, some kind of like harsh sound effect. Um, you can also kind of make a an ocean wave sound or you know whatever so you can kind of play around with the effects with this um, and the final one is the triangle wave and this is going to be kind of a mix between um, the our sine tooth wave and the sine wave it's going to sound a little nicer and a lot of times it's used for um, bass lines and um, even like melody lines and whatnot in music so that's just a brief overview of the waveform editor in Pico 8. I hope you found this useful. And the next video, we'll go over the tracker view.